don't know what to do to Having a problem. <laughs> what is the challenge I'm having here? What is the challenge? Morning everybody, how are you? We are here. Trust in God for his mercies. Trust in God for his grace. Getting a little warm in here. Trust in God for his protection. He protects, he guides. Yes. Orientation is locked. Rotate device. I don't think I'll do so. I want to thank the Lord for those of you who have joined me. Oh. Just encouraging you to be praying for certainly yourself, your families, for this beautiful island of Jamaica. Yeah, God is good. Morning, 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 morning. This is Wednesday morning in Jamaica. We should be in first Wednesday miracle fast today, but here we are. You are locked down in your house, is it? Are you locked down? The island is under curfew. Security forces of additional powers given to them. But not only that, the storm is threatening, threatening, threatening seriously. I was in church since morning, and while I was there praying, myself and a few others, I was just led of the Holy Spirit to share with you from a psalm that gives comfort, a psalm that all of us can relate to. And especially in this time, I, I don't know exactly where you all are, but I know that many, 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 many persons in Jamaica are at home this time, except those who are in the essential services, the police men and women, the JDF men and women, those in the medical services, and of course other essential services, the fire brigade, etc. But outside of that, we all are asked to stay home and by government's order, and certainly by our choice for our own well-being, we do so because extreme weather condition is not something to play with, or you don't play with extreme weather condition. Hurricane is somewhat predictable because it can be tracked, and the meteorologists, meteorologists, over time have done a good job in tracking these systems from the point of their development to how they move across countries, highlands, nations. Earthquake cannot be predicted or tracked. So what am I saying? I'm saying the natural disasters of our time, 
and of all times, some have taken all of us unaware when we say peace and safety, when we think not. But as for the hurricane, the storm, and all of those, they are being trapped and they give us information, advise us to how to give physical protection as much as is possible. I'll soon get to the portion of scripture, okay? I'm just waiting on some others to join me. We have 254 persons already within the five minutes that I've been on. And some of you have liked and uh, will you share the link? Will you subscribe? You'd be happy if you do so. Yeah, so I was making the point. <clears throat> I was thinking on my way back home this morning from the church that we had a wonderful prayer time there with those who showed up. And we'll talk more about that, God willing, when we meet on Sunday morning. It's an historic first Wednesday's fast. Historic. Oh, so many of you are subscribing. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Historic in many ways, and I'll speak to it. So the thought that came to me is that we, and this is really funny, we seek to make preparation and con concentrate our thoughts around physical security, physical protection, physical well-being than we do the spiritual. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we barricade the windows and the doors and we lock down this and we lock down that and we put in all kinds of physical security devices. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. Oh, no. But if we spend more time on our effort and interest, concentrating more so on our physical protection, physical security, physical well-being, than we do the spiritual, then we are putting the proverbial cart before the horse. Our priorities are not in order. <laughs> And I could use the words of Jesus Christ when he said to his disciples and to all of us, I think it is in Matthew chapter 6 or 7, I'll soon get to it if I do. They were concerned about a lot of things. Concerned about what they're going to eat, where, where they're going to live, maybe what they're going to drive, maybe what, certainly what they're going to be clothed in. And Jesus said, oh, no, you don't have to worry about all of those things. Your heavenly father knows that you, you are in need of all those things. And then he said to them, it is Matthew 6, yeah. And in this 33rd verse, he said to them, seek ye first the kingdom of God, seek his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So let us not become overly concerned about the physical, temporal, material. And I did say overly concerned because we ought to have some measure of concern and we ought to do whatever we think is necessary and right to give us some kind of physical protection. But please, my brothers and sisters, You're telling me to rotate my camera. I don't know what's the problem. I'm having a little problem here, okay? Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to bear with me on this. This is a new device. I am trying to uh, familiarize myself with. And I'm not the very best at technology. So please, understand. Stick with me. I'm bearing with it. So bear with me. Next time I'll get it right, okay? I will fiddle around and fiddle around and I'll get it right. Okay. So I know it's a bit off. It, these devices are programmed in a particular way. And I did say it's a new device. So I'll have to work with it a little. Okay. I'm so very sorry. Okay. So we should be concerned. But not overly concerned to the extent where we do not 
set the priorities right. Set them right. So Jesus says, your Heavenly Father know that you have need of all of those things. And I think I'm, I'm going to read it, okay? From Matthew chapter 6. Uh, what he says. Therefore I say unto you, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, for what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than raiment, and the body more than meat? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things doth the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god is righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you therefore take no thought for tomorrow for tomorrow will take shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil, evil thereof all right you're bearing with me with the device as it is and I, I thank you so much uh not proper but if you know me well you know you know i just do what i have to do the best way i can i, I did told you it's a new device and i will work at it and familiarize myself with all of the setting rotations and then we'll get it right next time all right, now to what I want to share with you as the Holy Spirit shared it with me uh, in the service this morning. Did I say the service? Yeah, where two or three are gathered in my name. So we had a service in church this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Power of faith family, visitors, Christian people from all denominations. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are under hurricane watch, not watch, warning. The warning is higher than the watch. So we are under hurricane warning, and we are asked to stay in. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my goodness, so many of you. Good morning. So let's get, get to it. It is Psalm 46. I didn't think of this. I, I can think a lot of things, but some things you don't think them through, especially when you are trusting the Lord to share something with you, to share with his people. So I just heard it in my spirit this morning, Psalm 46. It speaks of God. is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. You know, and there's no question if we are experiencing some kind of a maybe impending trouble with hurricane burial on the arising. For those of us who were in the church this morning, and all of us over the last few days, I'm sure we have been praying to Almighty God to calm the storm. If you heard my radio prayer this morning on Gospel JAFM, yeah, we prayed to that extent. And we pray that should it come, we hope it doesn't in any a uh, forcible way to cause devastation and catastrophic result in this country. We hope not. And we are still believing God. I think it was Martha. I'm going from here to there. I soon get to this. 
Mm -hmm. Martha said to Jesus in John chapter 11, after her, her brother died, and Jesus stayed away four days late. He was buried and all of that. When Jesus finally showed up, I love Martha's faith. She says, we know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he'll give it to you. Yeah, I, you know, I really love it. Maybe I need to read that verse for some of you who never quite penetrated that verse. Uh, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary stood still in the house. This is John 11, verse 20. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But listen, verse 22 of John chapter 11. But I know that even now, whatever thou wilt ask of God, he will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Boy, if this doesn't make you shout as a believer, I don't know what's going to make you shout. You know, when, when it's... I love that hallelujah. When it seemed as though all hope is lost, four days late, brother buried, Jesus showed up, and everybody thought, what a beautiful song we make out of it. You're four days late and all hope is gone. Lord, I know, bam, 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 bam. You know the song, huh? But here he showed up four days later, and Martha's confession, it marveled me. Lord, one, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. That's the kind of faith she, she possessed where the resurrection and the life is concerned, where the life giver is concerned. And then she took it a little further. Yes, I know he's dead and buried. But even now, this moment, somebody help me praise him, you know. Whoa, even now we know that whatever you ask of God, he will grant it unto you. So, with Jesus, it's never too late. I know my device is not properly rotated, but if somebody could type that in the chat, with Jesus, it's never too late. With Jesus, it's never too late. With Jesus, it's never too late. With Jesus, my goodness, it's never too late. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. On-time God. So here he says to us, and you could personalize it in Psalm 46, I am your refuge and strength. I am your very present help in trouble. Yeah. I am your very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and for me, this could be speaking of natural disasters. Yeah, it could be speaking of that. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. This is what hurricanes do. This is what tornadoes do. Yeah, this is what these natural disasters of this type, this is what they do. The waters are roaring right now. The seas are beyond their normal sea level. The mountains are rocking. The trees are shaking. Yeah, all those things happen. Shana Mohosete, glory to God. Yes, with Jesus, it's never too late. So many of you have typed it in. Although I am on the wrong side of the device. But I, I thank you so much. You are such wonderful, understanding people. Okay? So, this is where we are. He's a divine refuge. He's our strength. He's our divine helper. And he, tell us, he tells us we should embolden ourselves with fearlessness. Yeah. Fearlessness, we shall not fear. I said to the few persons who were with me in the church this morning, I said to them, we are believers. We are Christians. And we know that God is in control of everything. So when we pray and ask him to do a particular thing in a particular way, if he does it, it is according to his own sovereign will. Now hear me on this, and not necessarily 
because we've asked him to do it. No, 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 no. God works according to his own sovereign will. If it were a situation where we could just tell God what to do, in other words, program God, make God our robot. Tell me what kind of earth we'd have today. Tell me what kind of people you and I would be today. But we can't program him. Boy, I feel the anointing on me. Yeah, you can't program him. And when we pray, we must learn to pray according to his will. In olden times, the older generation, before you and I, before many of us would say, if the Lord's will, if the Lord's will, tomorrow, if God's will. Okay? So true. Yeah, thank you. Uh, who is that? Angie? Yeah, so true. That's it. So let me say that again, you know, because I hear some people use some language sometimes that cause me to shiver. Language such as, I challenge God. I put God on the spot. I put God to the test. Oh, no, my brothers and sisters. No, that's being presumptuous. I challenge God. I put God to the test. I put him on this and I... You know, you can put out fleece like Gideon. Yeah, put out your fleece. But it's going to be according to his own sovereign divine will. Take that from me. Yeah, the fleece was wet at one point. The second time around it was wet and the fleece was dried. Because it was God's will for Gideon to do exactly what God wants him to do. Okay? But do not say, you know, I challenge God, I put him to the test and this. And no, God is not a man. And I repeat intentionally, purposefully, deliberately. If it were so that we could manipulate God huh, and make him a robot to do what we want him to do. No, he wouldn't be the sovereign God that he is. And we would not be the subject. Maybe we would be the boss. When you pray, you must say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? My goodness, what a word on this burial morning in Jamaica and across the Caribbean. Oh, mm. so God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Waters thereof roar and be troubled. Mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Yeah. Do not live a life of fear. First Timothy 1 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Those of you who have joined me recently are just joining me. Remember I said my device is not properly rotated, but bear with me, okay? Yeah. I don't want to fiddle with it right now and mess it up. If you can hear me, that's good enough. Hear and your soul shall live. Don't worry about the, 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 the improper setting of the device for this time, okay? We'll get it right next time. It's a new device and I did not familiarize myself sufficiently. Okay, let's move on. So, what is this saying? Psalm 46, it says, among many things, repose, trust, confidence, faith in the ability of our God to do even exceeding abundantly above that which we may ask or think according to his own mighty power. According to Ephesians chapter 3. Yes, he can do it. He can do it. So many are fearful for the stop, the hurricane, what it will do, what it will not do. Fear will not change anything. Fear will only make matters worse because fear carrying carries a crippling effect. Yeah. Fear can shut you down. <laughs> shut you down. But I, I, I love what the four leprous men do, did. The four leprous men said, if we sit here, we'll die. No food here, we're going to die. No, absolutely, we're going to die. But if we go in the city, we might live. Food is in the city. But in the city, that's where our enemies are. That's it, where the Assyrians are. And they said, okay, let's try a thing. Let's try a thing. We certainly will die here. But if we move into the city, you never could tell. Miracles do happen. 
Did a miracle happen? Oh yeah, a supernatural miracle happened because four leprous men decided we will not die in fear. We will not be covered down in fear. We are going to stay, take a step of faith. Oh, praise the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. They took that step of faith and God honored their step of faith. So Psalm 46 is saying all of that and more. He's our divine refuge. He's our strength. He's our divine helper. And we should repose faith and confidence in him and do not live your life in fear. Let's continue to read the scripture. Verse 4. There is a river. The stream where I shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Brothers and sisters. Wow. A beautiful song that says, No matter what storm clouds may rock the ship of mine. The light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though the ship may be rocking and the sails may be torn, I'll find rest in the eye of the storm. Though the winds and water rages and the billows begin to roll, the blessed rock of ages, he'll speak peace to my soul. He holds me in his arms, so safe and so warm. And I'll find shelter and rest in the eye of the storm. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, my Master. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my King. That is who we are. We are a people of faith. And faith will always find a way. And I'm speaking by faith in the name of Jesus Christ that we will come out of whatever weather in good stead. Yeah, declare that upon yourself. Declare it upon the nation. Declare it. We shall, by the grace of God, come out of whatever. Uh, category 4, category 3, 2, 1, thunderstorm, no category, extreme rain and wind, whatever it is, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. I thank the Lord for the information that have been disseminated by the various credible agencies. Uh, a top list is the most honorable prime minister uh, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Local Government, the police, uh, the all the others, yeah. All the others who have disseminated information through the, the, the news media. I thank God for that. <laughs> but I have another bit of information that they have not dis disseminated, they have not given. And it is more important than theirs. Bishop, how on earth could you say that? Yeah, it's more important than theirs. Because all they can concern themselves with and all that they have concerned themselves with has to do with physical safety, physical protection, physical well-being. But brothers and sisters, let's, let's, let's be honest. Let's be brutally honest face truth front and center what's that bishop it is powerfully this all the physical temporal and material things around us and in the nation and who we are yeah one of these days they will cease to be. Yeah. And the eternal soul of man that will never die, that he received at creation, God breathed, the, breathed in him the breath of life, and he became an everlasting soul. 
he became an everlasting soul, a living soul that will not die. This house in which we are a tenant will change and decay one day. Oh, Jesus, my God. Mm -mm. This house in which we all are but tenants will change and decay. Yeah. And the eternal spirit that we are, that possess this body, that lives in this body, that uses this body as its transportation, one day is going to break down. Have you ever seen car broke down and transportation break down and aircraft, airplane as mechanical problem and they have to be grounded, take off and have to return and land to fix the problem? That's what this temporary house is like. Mm. Songman said, this old house that I'm living in is needing some repairs. The windows are letting in some cold, cold air. Tell myself I'm going to fix it. But I haven't got one solitary dime. But lately all I've got Oh, no, Jesus is leaving on my mind. No, no, no. So I'm saying my message, no disrespect to the most honorable prime minister, to all the others who have spoken. No, oh, no, maximum respect. But that's what they can speak to. I am called of God and sent by God to speak to that which is of more eternal value, of greater value. And you'd have noticed I started out by saying, Pay attention, do what you can, observe the rules, etc. But remember, we all are we all are strangers and pilgrims passing through this land. My goodness, so many people have joined me. I thank you so much. Uh, let others know that we are on. Wow. Yeah. Let them know we are on. Ah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Subscribe, share the link, click the button, keep it going. This is your hurricane edition of First Wednesday's Miracle Fast. And I'm going to pray for you in a special way. Don't worry about the device that is not properly configured, okay? i say it again. And I have to say it over and over for those who join me later. They may wonder, Bishop, what on earth you're going on with. So, so that's it. My message is, while we concentrate on the physical, the temporal, the material, please remember there is that which is spiritual and eternal. So give some thought to it. Give some thought to it and ensure that you take some time out. This is a good time for those who are not saved. I don't know if we have any on this platform at this time. But this is a good time, this season, for you to reckon with, the, with yourself. Hmm? I know utter poor and weak and miserable we are. Our vulnerability. And above all, above all, yeah, our powerlessness. Our powerlessness. <laughs> The meteorologists can predict, they can track, they can say this, but they can't stop nothing in terms of the weather. The government can inform and advise, etc., etc., evacuate and all of that, but they can't stop nothing. All of us are powerless where the acts of God are concerned. I'm sure you're getting blessed, you know, because this thing is blessing me. Yeah, it's blessing me. I'm flowing with the Holy Spirit and blessing you. Look at your own powerlessness and the powerlessness of all the agencies. Powerlessness of all of the horses and the chariots of this world. They can't stop nothing. If God decides to turn on the pressure... He is God. Wow, Jesus, I love you. Jesus. Yeah, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you, Johnson. Don't worry. We're going to pray. Stick with me. 
It won't be much longer. But you're at home. What are you doing? Cooking breakfast. No, man, this is first Wednesday. We fast and we pray and we seek the Lord. <laughs> so I hope all of you, my power of faith members who are on, I hope you're in fasting and you're praying. And you don't take this away. Well, I'm not going to church today, so I'm going to just eat and fill up my belly. No, no, no. Meat for the belly and belly for the meat, but both will be destroyed one of these days. Spend some time and talk to God in prayer. My wife is not with me right now in this room where I'm at. Well, this office. It's not even too properly ordered. You see my chairs on the background showing out and all of that. You know where she is? <laughs> She's in a bedroom on her stomach right now. Yeah, I'm telling you that. She's in a bedroom on her stomach before the Lord, crying out, praying and fasting and seeking God. That's where she is. And here I am. So the powerlessness of mankind is pronounced in all of these things. Can't predict an earthquake. Can't, cannot stop the storm. So... We have to trust God. We are at Psalm 46. That's where we are. And verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Let me tell you how the Christians look at things. We look at things through Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. All things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are thick called according to his purpose. Having said that, we do not just sit down and do nothing. We exercise our faith in the word of God. We call upon him for help because he tells us to do so. But we accept the end result as God having had his way. Can I say that again? We accept the result huh? as God having had his way. Because we can't manipulate him. He's not a robot. I say it again. And because of that, we don't run up our blood pressure those who have high blood pressure we don't run it up or those who have low bl blood pressure we don't run it down huh hypertension and hypotension you know there's two different classes to the blood pressure yeah hypo is the hypertension hyper is the low blood pressure we don't want high nor low we want regular pressure all right, so don't give yourself any trouble. Huh? What you say, Karen D? Yeah, don't give yourself no trouble. A big about Jesus, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord have his way. So true, Bishop. I'm reading some of the comments there now. A little difficult, but I'm trying my best. The Lord gave me this to share with you. I didn't have this in mind. Oh, no. The Lord gave me this to share with you right there on my knees in the church this morning with a few brethren who came. And we blessed the Lord for them. We had a wonderful time in prayer. And many historic things happened which I'll share at another time. So let's finish Psalm 46, verse number 6. The Eden raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Believers, let's celebrate God here. Yeah. Let the heathen rage. Let, you hear some people say some stupid things sometimes. Oh, if God is in the heaven, if God is God, why you allow earth to be in the state that is in? Why you allow murder, crime, and violence and all that? Come on. Don't, don't be ignorant. God made us free moral agents. Yeah. Can't you? If you choose to go stand in the rain outside there, would God drag you back in the house, with, put his hands around you and drag you in the house? No. You're a free moral agent. If you choose to do something evil, will God immobile you, cripple your feet so you can't move? No. No, no, no. He's God. What he does, he gives warning. He gives instruction. He gives guidance to the Holy Spirit. And he said, obey me and live. Obey me and have the blessedness. Say it loud, a bishop. Are you serious? Dear God, say it loud, a bishop. <laughs> yeah. If God does God, why murder, why crime, why violence, why rape, why incest, why? 
what I am doing here is the avenue through which God speaks to his people, convict the heart with the intention of converting the heart so that the sinner will turn from his sinful ways and then we won't have those crime and violence. And if you today who are not saved, if you're any one of you with me on this platform and you decide, I'm going to take heed to the word of God and I'm going to do that which is right, that which is honest and honorable and that which is acceptable norm in society, I'm going to do those things, then you will be a catalyst to bring about the change that we need. Jermaine, God bless you. We are Millicent Clark, you are there. You pray for Millicent Clark, okay? All of you know Millicent Clark by name, if not in person. She lost her mother. Her mother died in Florida. And I am in sympathy with you, and we are praying for you, okay? I'm sorry my device is not properly rotated so I could read all of the messages. Well, some of them are more of them. But pray for Evangelist Millicent Clark and her family. That God will strengthen them. It is not easy to lose a loved one. Especially a dear mother. Alright, so remember in your prayers. And I'm still making the appeal. Digre di digression a little. If, still making the appeal if anyone knows any relative for Joe Bailey. Deacon Joe Bailey. Yeah, he passed on. And over time we have been investigating him concerning relatives and all of that because he's a member of the church one of our deacons the saturday before he died on the wednesday morning i was at his house spent quite a while there with him thoroughly investigating him again and still did not get anything that he has any relative no brother no sister no mother no father no cousin no nobody at all well i find that strange so if you were to know joe bailey's relatives let us know because his funeral, funeral arrangement is being made by me, fully take, taken on by the church, because we, we have nobody that can connect with us, that has connected with us so far. So please let us know. Okay, so for this, your burial version of First Miracle Wednesday Fast, stay where you are, the number is rising, yeah. Rising numbers, okay. We are going to pray healing prayer for you before we close in a few minutes. But we are coming to you from Psalm 46, saying a lot of things. A lot of things have been said. Verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So, yeah. Verse 8 says, come, behold the works of the Lord. What des desolation he make in the earth. God can do it, you know. Some people act as though they, they have the control of the lever over a nation, over a people, over a family, over a church. No, you don't have it. You, you do not have it. All power is subject to the higher power. All powers must be subjected to the higher power. Power. Yeah, that's the highest authority we have, God's authority. It's only a pity we do not pay the kind of respect and regard to God's church and God's servant as we ought to these days. Bishop, I love your spiritual food. Blessing always. Thank you, Maxine. Okay. I won't call out your full name. Thank you. Wow, Jesus. Thank you, Miss Till. Thank you. God bless all of you. My goodness, I feel the anointing of God upon me so much here now. So God is the one who has the power. I spoke earlier about the powerlessness of mankind. Wow, Jesus, sometimes I, I laugh. The so man stand up big and lift up his chest and him roll as though he can roll thunder. Tell one of them to go out there and turn away. Burial. I stop burial. Tell them to go do it. I tell them to go do it. All of us would want it to be done. Tell them to go do it. And that's the reason why the Christians 
are so peaceful, my peace I give unto you. Why, Bishop? Because we know that duty is ours, results are God's. When we pray, whatever the end result is, we give God thanks for all things work together for good. Thank you, Deaconess J. Williams Lee. Huh. Yeah, you did not make you out, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, so, so that's it. You go to your bed tonight to sleep and you give God praise. Let me see who's calling me, please. I'm a responsible person. All right, I can't take this call now. I'll take it later on. She don't know that I'm on the air. And she's one of my dedicated viewers, listener to you. I don't know she's calling me this out. <laughs> okay. So, verse 9 of Psalm 46. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cut at the spear and sunder. He burneth the chariot and fire. That's God. That's how God does his thing. Yeah, God is God. That's how he does his thing. And nobody can stop him. <laughs> when, he when it pleases him to rain, R-E-I-N, he rain it down upon us. He's always R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G. -I -I He's always raining. Yeah, Minister Michael Mirage would say there's no co-god. Co there's no council of gods. Hmm? There's no deputy god. <laughs> there's no assistant god. No, no, none at all. No, no. He stands independent of all of us. What do you say, Linda Thomas? Yeah. Stand independent of all of us. He does everything according to his own sovereign will. You can't stop him. What are you laughing about, my dear? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know much I enjoy what I do, you know. That's why I do it in season and out of season. I enjoy to the max. I know my lane. And by the grace of God, I try to swim in my lane. Yeah, swim in my lane. I'm a preacher of the gospel, a declarer of righteousness and holiness, a presenter of Christ to the nation, a speaker for God. A speaker of God. That's what I do. And I enjoy doing it. <laughs> Someone said, late Bishop Dr. V.T. Williams was talking with him sometimes ago. And Dr. V.T. said to him, when the minister said to Dr. V.T., Dr. V.T. sometimes I feel tired. And Dr. V.T. said, that's okay. You can be tired in the work, but never be tired of the work. My God, that's powerful. Yeah, be tired in the work. And if you get tired in the work, you take a break, you take a rest. But any day you get tired of the work, that's time to pack your bag and go. <laughs> pack your bag and go when you get tired of the work. I feel no way tired. I come too far from where I started from. Oh, Jesus, nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. All right, when I get to 800 viewers, I will stop and pray. We we'll have a few more to go. 800 viewers, I'm waiting for 800. Eight is new beginning, okay? They keep calling me, calling me, calling me. Let me just turn off this phone, okay? Yeah. Eight is new beginning. So when we get to 800, I'll stop. And pray that God will bless you. Turn our phone. Come on. New beginning. All right. So that's it. You can get tired. Tired in the work. But don't be tired of the work. The day you get tired of the work. Is the time to. You know those famous words some years ago. I won't say them. Okay. God bless you, everybody. God bless you, uh, Tanisha. Yeah. God bless you, Eileen. God bless you, Linda. God bless you. Uh, Where are the others now? Olive. And God bless everybody, okay? <laughs> All right. So Psalm 46, we're bringing it down. He make it wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, he cut at the spear and sunder, he burneth the chariot and fire. Listen to verse number 10. 
of Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God, say the eternal God. I will be exalted among the even. I will be exalted in the earth. God knows how to exalt himself, you know, because some people are not exalting him. Some people are not. Not exalting God, exalting themselves. They accentuating all the things around them and their families and their political party and their member of parliament and their counselor and their wives and their husband and their children and their this and all of that. But they're not exalting the God who has made all of those things possible. Yeah, you don't. But God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the even. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, this word keeps running back and forth in my mind. The powerlessness of mankind. I don't know, it's just, it's just staying in me. The powerless of mankind, as powerful as some people think that they are. It reaches a point where everyone will reach your extremity. Yeah, reach your extremity. Regardless of the money that you have, millions or billions, yeah, regardless of the money, because regardless of the fame, regardless of the popularity, yeah, regardless of the earthly connections, huh? regardless of the high scholastic achievements, yeah, scholastic achievement, PhD and all of these, of course. Regardless of all the business enterprises, regardless of how powerful human beings have made themselves. Because in all fairness, nobody is powerful. All power belongs to God. He reached, oh, bless you to Bishop, my father. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Finally, my device is not properly rotated, but we are working with it, and the people are hearing me. That's why I have so many of them online in the short time that I'm here. They are hearing me well, okay? And they are working with this, with me this morning. We'll get it right next time. So, powerful men, powerful women. Huh? But it reaches a point where our powerlessness stands out more than our power. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. That's God. Mm -hmm. The sovereign God. I love that. Denise Roach, you find me? Okay. You're in New York. You always find me and I always pick you out. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, the sovereign God reigns. So he said, be still. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> wow. Don't fly in my face. Don't question me. Don't argue with me. No, don't argue with me. God said to Israel at one time, I'm getting ready to pray, friend. Just don't leave me. Stay with me. Five more minutes and we're going to pray. By that time, I'll have my 800 online. Okay? So you don't leave. You stay with me. God said to Israel at one time, you, you're fussing with me, you're doing all kinds of things and saying all kinds of things, but you're hungry, you want food. You remember leeks and garlics and cucumber in Egypt and you getting tired of manna, which is heavenly food. A feed you with quail, I'll give you manna, I'll give you bread that your fathers... And, 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 and God said, hold on, let me tell you this, if I were hungry, I would not even tell you because the earth is mine. The cattle and a thousand hills are mine. Everything, everything is mine, said God. And those of us who think that we are owners, please know that we are only holders. Okay? All right, we're winding it down now. Finally, verse 11, Psalm 46. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I want to close it out with you making that declaration. Put it on records. On record, the Lord of hosts is with me. Put it on, yeah? Confess it. The Lord of hosts is with me and my family. Lord of hosts is with me. Let's see it and hear it and see it. 
let his agent see it. And because the Lord of hosts is with me and the God of Jacob is my refuge, you can boast in the Lord. Yeah, Lydia Thomas. Yeah, you can show off your God. God will show up for you and you can show off your God. That's it. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Ye do I, yo, my God Almighty. We're getting ready to pray. All right? Just a few more people for 800 and I'll, I'll close. So we did say from Psalm 46 that God is a divine refuge. God is our strength. God is our divine helper, and it, it brings to the fore our powerlessness in the midst of prevailing circumstances that if we could fix them, if we could change them, nobody would need to ask us to do it. We would readily, readily do it. But here is a God who is all-powerful that Martha said to him in John 11, whatever verse I read, Martha said to him, if you were here, our brother would not die. But even now, we know that whatever you ask of God, he will give it unto you. That's the kind of power that supersedes fear and powerlessness. We also spoke that we must repose, repose full confidence in the ability of Almighty God to do, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think. We also show that whatever God's need to do to show that he is in charge, he is in control, he can do it, he will do it, he has done it often time, and he'll do it again. Oh, praise the name. Oh, my good, we're gone way over 800. Oh, Lord. So we need to bring it down right now, really. <laughs> oh, my goodness, numbers are climbing. God bless you. Okay, it is God who caused wars to cease. It is God in Jesus Christ who looked on the raging wind, tempestuous billows, and said, Peace be still. So though the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high. Though the seas are roaring, though the mountains are shaking, though the floods are coming, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is in the midst of earth. May the Lord bless you. May all of us be safe in the name of Jesus Christ. May your loved ones be safe. Be the Samaritan that you can be in all the ways that you can if necessity arises. Keep safe, keep well. Oh, praise God. And if you can call up someone, give them a prayer, give them an encouraging word, do so, please. We all need, need each other. We in ways more than one. So, burials edition of First Wednesday Miracle Fast coming to you from my place to your place. Yeah, you are home. I am home too. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I love you, Lord. Let's get ready to pray. And let's remember Evangelist <clears throat> Millicent Clark in your prayer. Let's remember our prayer leader, evangelist Jennifer Rowe. She was in church with me this morning. Yeah, she was in church. Let's remember her. Her daughter needs our prayer. I can say this. I don't think she'd be mad at me saying this. Her daughter has just lost her baby, born and lived for just a few days. That's not easy to deal with. Oh, no, that's not easy for mother, grandmother, for the family circle. Infants, just born, live for just a few days, maybe six days. So the family is in mourning. We want you to pray for evangelist Jennifer Rowe, her daughter in particular, but the entire family circle. For you, we are praying. We are praying for you. The number is just moving away. But I got to close at this time. Let us believe God. Lay hands on some part of your body. Especially if you're hurting in a particular area. Yeah. And believe God with me as I pray. My God. Ooh, Jesus. 
as I pray thou pray of faith. Gracious, loving, almighty Father, we thank you because we have declared your word from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. We thank you, Lord God, because you are present help in time of trouble. Now we come and we lift up to you all of your saints. But may I say in a very special way, those who have joined me and are on this platform at this time, gracious God, whatever the needs of their lives are, we lift them up to you. We lift up those who are sick in body. Sickness is not something that anyone wants. It's nothing to that we can enjoy. No wonder you took 39 stripes on your back, wounded for our transgression. My God, bruised for our iniquity, iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes we are healed, Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. We ask you to let healing come to your people. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And all that is between crown of the head to sole of the feet. All the organs that are therein, O oh God brains are there senses are there highs are there hears are there esophagus is there god almighty <laughs> oh jesus we ask you to regulate everything that needs to be regulated down into the stomach god almighty heart is there lungs are connected there <laughs> wow livers and kidneys are in the body Ah, oh, God, blood as is there in the name of Jesus Christ. Small and large intestines are there. People are hurting in different areas of life. My God Almighty, oh, the womb is there, prostate is there in the name of Jesus Christ. Veins are throughout the body, blood vessels. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, to give a physical overall to the body of Christ, to those in my audience in a very special way, even now, show yourself strong, show yourself mighty. So whatever things are there that didn't come from you, Lord, we curse it now by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, by the empty cross and the empty tomb, by the enthroned Savior at the right hand of God, we curse them now. Did you not say if any two of you shall agree? Touching anything that we shall ask in your name, it shall be done. Yes, Lord, you've said so. And I got over 800 people with me right now connected in the name of Jesus on one of the platforms. In the name of Jesus Christ, many are also on the others. We pray that the healing hand of Calvary will touch them in a very special way. Oh God, you say those who mourn shall be comforted. We pray for Evangelist Clark that you touch her at the passing of her mother. Comfort her heart, oh God. Comfort the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Be with them in the midst of this kind of storm. Oh God Almighty, strengthen and support them, oh God. We pray for Evangelist Jennifer Roja, prayer leader. We ask you, my God, to stand by her, touch her, touch her daughter at the passing of the infant, O oh God. Amen. The family is emotionally torn. But Lord God, healing comes from you. So will you minister to them now? Strengthen them in this hour. And all others who have lost loved ones, we pray that you touch them, Lord, and strengthen them in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are going through marital chores, or chores of amen, misunderstanding and quarreling and fussing, God Almighty, even emotional separation. Some persons are physically together in the same space, but they are emotionally separated. God, we ask you to pour in the oil and the wine and turn it around for them. Oh God, those who are fearful and anxious, about what might or might not happen as a result of burial or hurricane. God, help them to put confidence in you and to know that as the psalm declare you, so you are our refuge and strength 
very present help in trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for those, my God, who are being tested in different areas of life. Strengthen them, we pray thee. And, O oh God, grant that throughout the remainder of this day into the night. <laughs> Lord God Almighty, where they say the worst is yet to come, I pray, my God, that you, <laughs> Lord, can I say, disappoint those who look want to see distress of the nation. Yes, Lord, disappoint them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the meteorologists know that you are God. Let the scientists know that you are God. Let the Christian community who have been presenting you as a God of might and miracle show yourself on our behalf, Lord, and silence the enemy. Shut down the god -haters. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, let's hear what they will say when the eternal God show up and show off even. Amen. A stitch in time, like Martha says. God, we are still believing you. We always believe you. And we say, whatever the hand be, it is to your glory and to your honor. And we will yet praise you in the name of Jesus. So hear our prayers today. All those who would have normally attend first Wednesday miracle fast, I ask you to touch them now wherever they are across Jamaica, across the nations. In the name of Jesus Christ, minister to them now. Let God arise for them and the enemies be scattered. Let it be safe and peaceful for one and for all. Touch our prime minister and his ministers, the ministers of government, O oh God, who are trying their best on the physical and on the economical side of life, be with them, we pray thee. The security forces, men and women are out there. The medical fraternities, they are out there. The fire brigade, they are there. God Almighty and all the others, O oh God Almighty, we pray for them this morning. Touch them and let your peace which Passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Father, please remember the first responders. Some people do not know that the first responders, oh God, is a Christian community. Because we are always on the front line of the battle. We do not rise up, my God, when there is an impending disaster. We are always on the front line of the battle. We are first responders to every Thing in this nation that threatens the peace and the tranquility and the security and the blessing of your people. We are the first responders. Bless us, we pray. Cover us under the blood. And what I fail of asking you this morning, you shall not fail to grant it unto us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Emmanuel, our God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we run over 800 to 900 plus on this device and this morning. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And if I need to return to you tomorrow again in the will of the Lord, I will do so. And by then, my device will be properly rotated, and we'll have it all together. Until then, God be with you, love you, appreciate you. Pray for us as we pray one for another and pray for Jamaica, land we love. God bless you all is my prayer. Amen. What a wonderful 60 minutes together. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Joe Bailey's funeral will be on the 19th of July. Yeah. Bishop Dr. V.T. Williams' funeral is still on for the this Saturday. Yeah. The 6th of July. 10 o'clock, Power of Faith Ministries in Portmore. If it's possible, you want to come share your, show your final respect to the father of evangelism. We got enough space for everybody. 
until we meet again. God be with you. I got to go now. Let's see if we can get out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless you.